What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Bull Season 4, Episode 1, Labor Days. So, kind of interested to get back into this one, see how it is, although based on the last CBS show that I watched, not too excited. <laughs> but, as far as this opening for the season is concerned, it's a pretty decent start. You know, I had to refresh myself a little bit to remember what happened at the end of last season, and yeah, remembering some of the stuff that happened with Bull and Benny, it was nice to see them reconcile in this episode. And honestly, I thought it made the most sense the way they handled it, because it wasn't just Benny apologizing for attacking Bull, which is what I was worried it was going to be after what I remembered from last season. Uh, it was it was really Bull not just respecting Benny more, but also taking the rest of the team's ideas and contributions on more. And I do think that's something that, if I remember right, you know, because it's been a while since I've watched the show, it's something that I don't remember Bull doing a lot of. I don't feel like he was the type of boss who was like, oh yeah, let me just listen to everybody's ideas and um, I'll listen to them and really consider them and I might go with one of your ideas. It was mainly, he had his idea, he knew what he wanted to do, and he would just go and do it. And that's kind of how a lot of this show has been. So it was interesting to see he had an idea for what he wanted to do because partially I think the whole being away from Benny, not having this positive influence, because I do think that Benny influences him in a positive way. I do think that's part of why he's had such a negative outlook, and he thought there's no way that people would change their minds. They want somebody to pay. Um, and granted, he was kind of right about the jury, but we see that turns out the ADA, which ADA didn't seem like a bad guy. Um, I do like the fact that it was a ROM from the Blacklist playing the ADA. But we see at the end, you know, he decided to change his mind and not pursue the case against the girl anymore, and that's kind of what saved the day for them. Um, so yeah, it was a nice moment, and I feel like it really, it was a good moral as well. Uh, a couple things that sort of stood out to me in this episode. First of all, really funny lines throughout. Uh, the one that definitely made me laugh probably the hardest <laughs> is Bull sitting in bed with Izzy, which I'm still... Not sure how I feel about that whole situation, but I'm just going to wait and see what this, what it's going to show me. Because, again, I kind of felt like Diane Bull might be something, but I don't know. I'm typically not that interested in relationships, but in shows like this, I am a little bit more invested to see what they're going to do with the characters' personal lives. Um, but there was a great line where he's like, I need your brother. She's like, I'm sorry, am I not enough? <laughs> just, it was a good line from Izzy. Um, the ending was the other thing that kind of stood out to me as kind of, what? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't really understand what the thinking was behind it. Like, I, I don't know. It, it seems a little odd for us to jump into the future in a show like this, which is a lot more based in reality, but we just jumped 27 years into the future. It's like, oh yeah, things must have been a lot simpler back then. And basically telling us how the case wrapped up through the eyes of Bull's daughter and I guess her new husband. I, I don't know. I'm just a little weirded out that they decided to go that route with it. <laughs> Cause yeah, I don't know. It's mainly because with shows on CBS, typically you do see them running for, a long time because they are those type of shows that can just sort of run they do the episodic thing they don't have to tell all these crazy stories and really end at any end point it's just they keep going and going and we've seen it with NCIS you know Criminal Minds lasted 15 seasons and I think I don't remember if CSI or Law and Order is on CBS or not because I know those two are also very long running series but typically, Bull, I think, fits that formula where you've got a team, so you could always switch out members of the team to keep things fresh. It's very episodic, because every episode is just a different case that they have to tackle, and they follow the trial science. In fact, it's a type of show that can evolve with trial science evolving as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, it seems odd that they would be like, yeah, let's just jump into the future and show Bull's daughter when there is a slight chance that we might see... Bull's daughter in this show, and now you have to try to make her look like this girl that you just showed. <laughs> um, so I don't know, it just, it felt a little weird, I'm not really sure why they decided to do it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll see more flashes forward with her, if they do a gender reveal as like a big thing in a, in a future episode, I feel like that's also going to be weird, because like, well we already know it's going to be a girl, because we just saw this, <laughs> it would be really weird if all of a sudden, it's a boy! 
what? <laughs> um, but anyways, I mean, yeah, overall, though, it was a good episode to get us started. A good episode for Bull as well to come back after the end of the last season, how he and Benny left things. It was nice to see them sort of return, get back together, work together. And I, I did appreciate the fact that this was not necessarily a case where there's a bad guy in the mix. It's kind of all up in the air. You know, the bad guy was shot, so he's no longer in the picture. The families are just hurting and wanting to blame somebody for it, and this girl is an easy scapegoat. So I, I like the fact that it was... It wasn't like, oh, this is evil person that's trying to do all this. Like, the ADA is like, no, somebody needs to pay. Like, you could clearly tell through most of his scenes that he wasn't necessarily wanting to blame the girl either, but he's just here to do his job. You know, the families want him to try to take this girl down and make her father pay because he's rich, and so that's just what he's paid to do. But you could see through some of his interactions, especially that one scene that where Bull was taking on the, the other lawyer who was trying to keep him out of court, I really like that scene as well because you can tell from his reaction, where's the other guy that you're normally with? Because I feel like he has a conscience. <laughs> just, it was a really nice line. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to it based on this first episode. We'll see if it keeps my interest or if things go off the rails <laughs> this season. Um, I will say one final thing. It was kind of funny listening to Bull talk to Benny near the end, he's just like, yeah, I just feel like people are so crazy right now. <laughs> like, well, this is 2019, Bull. Get ready for 2020, because a lot of people go crazy. In fact, looking at the pictures and seeing how you're following along with everybody else, it looks like you might be going a little crazy too in the future. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get there when we get there, and I'll probably avoid talking about a lot of that stuff that happened in 2020, but we'll see if at least the show can hold my interest through that. Because that'll be a true testament to whether or not this show is any good. Because <laughs> if you can hold my interest despite all that stuff that I don't want to talk about or see anymore, it's it's a good it's a good premise. But anyways, on to the next episode. I'll see you there. And now episode two, Fantastica Voyage. I don't know why. I just it, it says Fantastica, so I'm assuming it's is that Italian? I don't actually know. But um. Ah, this one was pretty good as well. It is, again, kind of ending on a strange note where it's not really a, a happy ending, like a fully happy ending. Like, there is some some issues with the jury being basically held up and a mistrial, and they're going to have to do it again. But it's enough of a happy ending where it's like, okay, so she gets a chance to work on this filter, hopefully get it done, and then she comes back, and it's not fraud anymore because she actually got it done. So, yeah, I... I thought that was a pretty solid ending for the most part because she did have to answer for a lot of what she was saying, a lot of the lies she was telling, which I think is appropriate because while I do understand her points that she was making about, well, I'm just selling a story because the story doesn't take away from the truth of what happened, Like I, I get that, but at the same time, there is something to be said about, well, if you're just going to be selling a story instead of actually selling what you're doing, you kind of can get caught up in a bit of the gray area that's in between the salesman and the inventor <laughs> aspect of it. Um, so I, I'm glad that it wasn't just like a, oh, well, she lied, but she was doing it for a good reason, so the jury's okay with it. No, there were a lot of people like, she lied to us. She told us this heartbreaking story that none of it was true, so how can we trust anything she says? Which I think is a very natural reaction. Um, so, yeah, I thought, for the most part, pretty well done. Uh, the stuff with Chunk and his daughter, not really sure what to think about it, just because I don't really remember a lot of their story, so I don't know what's going on there. I'm assuming we're going to find out a more about it later. Um, but, I, I don't know. We'll see where that goes. I did think his line to... Is it Taylor? I think it's Taylor. I can't remember the, the hacker girl's... Well, I say hacker girl, the one that took over for Cable, I think was her name. <laughs> God, it's been so long since I watched this show. Um, but his question, you used to be 19, right? <laughs> Who asked somebody that question? <laughs> like, the, the better question, you, you have teenage daughters, right? Like, that would be a question, which she doesn't. But that would be a more likely question. Or it's like, do you, were you like this as a teenager? Were you... Were you rebellious? Like, 
th just asking her, you used to be 19, that's a stupid question. <laughs> um, so that was dumb, but yeah, some of the side stories for these characters, trying to remember as much as I can, but I'll, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do with them going from here on out. Um, but yeah, overall, thought it was a perfectly fine case. Stuff on the outside was okay as well. I, I like the fact that Bull was really trying to, I guess, still stick to this idea that he is listening to Benny. He is taking his advice on board. In this case, I do find it a little bit weird just because he does seem to be somebody who can read people well most of the time. The fact that he was so easily convinced by this woman, it does make him seem like he's not as good at his job as we're supposed to believe. Like, honestly, I think about, like, Lie to Me, you know, one of my favorite shows of all time. Similar science there in that you can read people based on, you know, little micro expressions in the face and kind of get a sense of what they're thinking. And I feel like in a show like that, you know, Lightman would be able to look at that woman and go, okay, yeah, she's full of it. Um, but instead it was just kind of like Bull was so easily, oh yeah, I, I believe her a hundred percent. Let's help her out guys. And I feel like that sort of takes away from what the team does. You know, this idea that they can <clears throat> read the jurors and see what they're all thinking. Um, of course, in this case, it turned out to be one of their, what's it called? The mock jurors? Is that, is that what they're, the people that are supposed to represent the actual jurors, I think is called? Um, but yeah, I do, I do kind of wonder if it's because that one guy did have such a personal investment, you know, the story he told about not signing the guy who was talking about selling books online, um, if that's the difference, you know, cause he had this personal connection to the case, whereas probably the guy on the mock jury that represents him may not have that same personal story. So that's why he may have been showing his red. But in reality, the actual guy was like, no, I, I feel like I want to see her her thing through to the end. You know, I want to see where this is going to go. Um, so it is kind of interesting, some of the science they employ. But at the same time, that sort of gets undercut by the idea that, well, none of the team could really see through her. And maybe they did, and Bull was just sort of caught up in the, in the moment. But at the same time, as the boss, you feel like he would be the best at reading people and seeing, okay, is this a good client to take on? Um, which I, I guess Benny also says at the end, you two are very alike. So maybe that's part of the reason why, but I don't know. I just have a lot of questions about that whole story that I don't think are going to get answered. Um, but I don't know, we'll see, but yeah, that's it for the second episode. So on to the third one. I'll see you there. And now episode three rectify. This was a good one. Uh, it was really nice moments in this for, for chunk, for Benny, um, and just a good story overall as well. I also felt, I guess, so, sort of proud of myself, although maybe it's just a sign that I know how a lot of these CBS shows work, uh, especially shows that are kind of based on a bit of mystery and you're trying to figure out what exactly happened. And obviously that's not always the case in this show. Sometimes it's just about trying to find the right narrative to sort of help the jury see their side of the case. Um, but in cases where there's a bit of mystery to it and you're trying to figure out who could have done it, because in this case, obviously, you know, we're implying that Eddie is not the one that did it. So it's like, well, who could have done it? We need to find another suspect. And I will say I did figure out pretty early on. I'm like, so I'm going to guess and say that it was the girl who was actually the target. And then it's the drug dealer that came out. Like, I don't know if he was just there and got threatened as well, or if he tried to stop them from shooting the girl, but. I'm guessing that's how he got shot, but it's, it's going to be the girls actually the target. And I was right. I was like, cool. So, um, but maybe that was super predictable and everybody figured that out early on. But I kind of figured that would be where the case was going to go towards. Um, and that would obviously lead toward, well, obviously Eddie had no reason to shoot her, so he couldn't have done it type of thing. Um, what it actually ended up being, you know, her sleeping with her sister's husband. That's how she got pregnant. I will say it was a little darker than I imagined, especially finding out that her sister is the one that killed her. Um, yeah, I will admit I did not see that one coming. And that final scene where she breaks down, I was like, oh, that one, uh, that got real for a moment. Um, but yeah, I, I liked a lot of this episode. I liked a lot of the moving pieces in it. Uh, some really good, again, moments in it as well. 
just from Chunk really trying to reach out and help this guy who's been writing all these letters, trying to get people to hear his story, especially, you know, he did some research, found out about this prostitute who apparently was testifying in all of these different cases. Um, it was it was nice to see Chunk get his moment to sort of step up and say, hey, this is weird. I'm going to look into this and I'm going to defend you. Um, and then, of course, Benny realizing that he was responsible that was a good moment for him as well to sort of say, all right, I need to rectify this. It's the name of the episode. Um, and probably one of my favorite moments of the season so far is Chunk and Benny um, pitching the idea of defending this kid to Bull. Well, not so much a kid anymore, but defending him to Bull. And Bull, of course, is like, I just don't know. Chunk, what do you think? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I would really like to be second chair. Benny, oh, you, you could still be second chair. I've always been Team Benny. <laughs> I don't know, just something about the delivery. It was, it was too perfect, and it made me laugh pretty hard. So, um, but yeah, all in all, this is a really good episode. We still don't really get much information about what's going on with Chunk and his daughter. Um, she calls him at the beginning of this episode. Don't really get any answers. She just says she wants to meet up with him. So I don't know if this is going to be a running story throughout the whole season, or if this is just sort of we're getting bits and pieces sprinkled throughout the season as to what she's going through. Um, I'm guessing, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm guessing just because she's college age might have something to do with a boy, because, <laughs> I don't know, college romances are always so messy, and people always think, oh, this is true love, until it's not, and then you get out of college, and you look back, and you're like, my god, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, so that might have something to do with it, or it might tie into a future case that's coming later this season. Whatever the case, um, I am looking forward to seeing more about that. Because again, part of what makes these shows where you have a team of characters so interesting is whenever the team of characters have things going on that keep you engaged. And you want to see more. They're good characters, they're well written, and you like them. And so you want to see them have a good time. You want to see them get to hang out with their kids, you know, be there for them as a parent type of thing. So, yeah, I I hope we get more answers on that soon, but <coughs> I'm going to stop choking on whatever ah, is trying to kill me. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and wrap this up because there's not much else to say. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future bowl reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.